Oh, would it be wrong to serve like little shrimps on here? You know, since he's a fish. I mean, would that be considered, you know, tacky? Poor taste. We'll serve cheese on it instead. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I've been running around all day. I've been out sourcing, and I guess the reason why I say sourcing and not necessarily thrifting is I was at a whole bunch of places today other than uh, thrift shops. In fact, I didn't even set foot in a thrift shop today. <clears throat> we have so many wonderful flea markets in this area, and uh, many of them feature uh, sort of antique-only sections. So if you don't want socks and baby clothes and pots and pans, you can stay away from that part of the uh, parking lot or wherever the flea market is and just head for the old stuff. And of course, that's what I always do. So enjoy what I'm gonna show you, I hope. It's a variety of things. Uh, I'll tell you a little, I haven't researched anything, uh, but I'm going to tell you if I can remember what I paid for things and just do some descriptions. Um, I don't know if you're, if it's hot or cold where you are. It's it's warmed up here again. It was chilly, but now we're back into the 70s, the upper 70s for a while anyway. That won't last. So I'm actually drinking some cold apple cider. All right, let's. Sit. We'll start off with a shaker here that has a wonderful green Art Deco label on it, which is actually paint on there, original lid. And this one has an interesting mark on the bottom. I don't know, but whether or not you can see, <clears throat> Chef Boyardee, that's right. That's the Chef Boyardee. Did your parents ever leave that for the babysitter to make when they were going out dancing? Did it come in a can? Chef, yeah, Chef Boyardee comes in a can. I guess they're still making it. But uh, this was made, these were made by, I want to say, Hazel Atlas, not McKee. And actually made for Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee, this is just part of a range set. You would have had, obviously, salt, pepper, and flour with it. <clears throat> and it doesn't say Hazel Atlas on the bottom. It, it just says uh, Chef Boy RD uh, dinner. And so obviously these were somehow premium. I don't know, maybe you saved labels or bought so many cans and then you could cash them in and your grocer would hand this over to you, something like that. So I only found sugar. I paid $2 for it and it should sell for about $20, maybe $25. A beautiful piece of elegant depression glass, which again, I need to go and get my 1920s and 30s elegant depression glass books. Uh, I have a feeling this might be made by the Tiffin Glass Company. They did have decorating rooms where uh, this painting was done, as you can see. Sometimes I'm not always the biggest fan of painted glass unless it's done really well and the paint remains in good condition. And boy, the condition on this paint is excellent and the paintwork is, is excellent as well. Very finely done. So this would have been more, a more expensive piece. And uh, some of the good glass companies had decorating rooms, you know, tables with women sitting all around. It was almost always women who did that work and they would delicately just sit there and paint these things all day. Something like this would be perfect for uh, after dinner mints, but a lot of times these were, these were referred to as jelly compotes or comports. I'd put those little after dinner mints in there. Haven't decided if I'm gonna part with that yet. I guess I really haven't said anything about what's, what I'm gonna keep and what I'm gonna sell, but I don't have anything listed yet, so I guess it doesn't matter. Then, um, boy, you gotta be from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or New York to uh, 
know what the Lackawanna, Lackawanna Railroad was, uh, I, um, let's see. Well, Lackawanna is a county in, in uh, Pennsylvania. My paternal grandmother's family uh, lived in upstate Pennsylvania for generations and generations and generations. And the Lackawanna Railroad, I think, went from, well, I know it went from New Jersey to Buffalo. You know, Hoboken, Secaucus, Jersey City, something like that. And it would make its way across uh, through uh, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, probably through Scranton, and then up into uh, to Buffalo, New York. And that's the Lack of Lackawanna Railroad. train that's the line there as you can see it says the route or route of Phoebe Snow Phoebe Snow not the not the recording artist <laughs> but it's a, it was a train line it was a railroad line called the Phoebe Snow and so there are menus and ashtrays and I don't know how long it ran or anything like that but these are tiny little Dixie cups and it does say I it does say which you can barely see right there Dixie cup um, but it's, it's funny when, um, when we see these little cups today, you know, if you were, if anybody said, you know, I want a drink of something and you gave them this, they'd say, uh, I didn't ask for cough medicine, right? I mean, we take cough medicine out of cups like this today, but, uh, I'm certainly old enough to remember when you went to somewhere, uh, sort of like a fast food restaurant or something and you got a small the smalls were small. Remember how small, small used to be? Well, anyway, I got a whole stack full of these little Dixie cups for uh, $1. So, we'll see what happens with those. Also, something I know I'm going to keep. This came from the flea market this morning. One of the flea markets. I went to three flea markets this morning. This is right out of the 1930s. Uh, sailing ships like this were, were a very popular motif. Uh, old iron sides was uh, memorialized in prints that hung on people's walls, bookends. They were even in the scroll work on metal floor lamps. They were pa painted on parchment lampshades. You saw um, fancy ships like this, sailing ships, sometimes the Spanish galleon ship and, and others. But this is made out of a green celluloid and, and we see the little paper calendar that's all there, I checked. 
And this would just stand on the desk. It's a little easel style. Um, I haven't really looked that closely to see if there's a maker's mark on it or not, but. Ooh, I feel it's warm. I'm actually, it's warm in here and I'm hot because I've got this light on me and it's the time of the year that late in the afternoon, it just gets warm inside and I need to, uh, I'm looking in that direction because I need to open the windows and let some cool air in. So anyway, and this is in really good shape, definitely for the desk and from the 1930s. Speaking of the, speaking of the 30s, you all know what this is. Um, many of you grew up in homes and uh, are still living in homes with ceiling shades. This did not go on a floor lamp. As you know, this hung from the ceiling or was mounted up like this. And this is in a nice pale blue color. This is gonna date from the Depression era, the 1930s and 40s. Um, I find shades like this pretty frequently. What I almost never find is the actual mounting hardware, which we have right here. Now, of course, you can go out to the big box hardware stores and get something to mount this, but that's the original right there, and let's, let's look at how, how it would work. This is glass here, and it is uh, painted on the inside. It, it could be painted any color. And then this is glass. There's the place for our light bulb. The person who took this off the ceiling even saved uh, the, the decorative tops to the screws for here and here. So uh, this goes up in the ceiling like this. And then with a little screw on finial, our uh, glass shade hangs like this. Okay, so there it is, and uh, I paid $2 for this one. I forget what I paid for that, but that, that shade was not with this fixture. And then I got a second one, which I also paid $2 for, and uh, this is metal here instead of glass, but it has the same kind of uh, glass around the... Uh, the light bulb. Okay, so there's another one. And then, hold on, I got a third. This one is deco. Well, there's a kind of deco as well, but when you look at this, it almost looks like, now they made table lamps similar to this. Chase made them, Chase a Brass Company made them and others where there'd be a fancy shade that would hang down. But we know this is a ceiling, was mounted on the ceiling. You know, we wouldn't have two screws here, we wouldn't have two holes here and here if this were a table lamp. So this hangs from the ceiling like this. And uh, the reason why we have this wide separation here is to accommodate a glass shade, a glass uh, slip shade that would sit right down in here. So I have to go through all my shades and see what I can find, but that's a nice Art Deco ceiling, lamp, ceiling mounted lamp. Each of the lamps cost $2 each. $8 for the pair, and I didn't, the man didn't say 10, and then I said, will you take eight? He just said eight, and I didn't say, will you take five, because eight was a great price. Uh, I have two matching lamps. These are pottery lamps, and these could be dresser lamps. They would be wonderful on a mantle. Yep, really beautiful old brass sockets. And these are made in the 1920s or 30s, probably the 30s, and they do say made in Japan. Kind of hard to see it, but it is stamped way up under there, made in Japan. And that particular mark is a mark that you would see again in the, uh, before the Second World War. So these are pre-1941, but they date after 1921. 
So uh, nothing wrong with them, not a chip or a crack. Um, I'm probably just gonna leave these electric cords on there because they're in good shape. Somebody did rewire these and, and they can be perfectly used just like that. I don't need another set of lamps. So those are, but they're very handsome. I like that brown blaze. They're probably gonna be for sale. Then we have a little box of candy. There's no candy left in it. Anybody remember these? Delights, assorted chews, a delicious confection produced by the Delight Sweets Incorporated of New York. And that looks like a box that's probably from the 1940s. And we can see it's in great shape. And then here's a wonderful vase. A beautiful, beautiful pottery vase. And I really like the way the color graduates from uh, this wonderful lighter green color. As it, as it moves down the vase, it becomes it becomes darker and richer. Interesting handles. I sent a picture of this to my former college roommate who said the handles look like dragon's tails. I have to agree with that. And it's completely unmarked on the bottom. And there's no chips or cracks. It's nice and clean. It's really pretty. And my guess is on this that it's going to date to the Depression era. What, what do you think? I like it. I love it. I really like the colors. Okay, Lisa, I have a fancy turkey toilet. Uh, but it's more than a fancy turkey toilet. It's the top as well. So I think this is one of the Ellie Smith turkeys. And it's a nice big heavy one, as, we can, as you can see. And it's really gorgeous in Amberina, is it not? Mm-hmm. I do like the turkeys in amber, but I have to say this one in this wonderful Amberina is just absolutely, this is a nice turkey. Nice turkey lurk. On a table, I found one just one but when you find just one of these you buy it because collectors call this watermelon glass for obvious reasons more than one company made it tiffin did a lot of it i, I know i've said tiffin already in this video um, but um, i'm almost certain that falstoria made some as well and uh, or fenton i anyway but just one, there's the pink, which is etched, and then the green on the bottom. And this is in excellent condition, and it has no, boy, you really want to uh, do this because you can get little flea bites on the top. That's not good, but that's, there it is. A little more complicated to make. This, this glass does well. I'm gonna to try to attribute it to a specific maker. And uh, just that one piece right there is, is, a, is a $20 stem on its own. Mm-hmm, yes it is. Yeah. Uh, one piece of green glass, green depression glass, a nice piece here. Of course this will glow and this um, this could stand alone as a little jelly compote. Normally, the cheese doesn't have this bowl shape to it, so I'd say it's just a jelly compote, or even just for little candies or whatever you wanted. But it's a nice, it's a nice uh, uh, quality piece of, of uh, uranium glass from the 1930s. And I'm always looking out for great examples of Art Deco, and look at this. <laughs> This is just my speed and right up my alley. Do you see that? Look at that fish. Now he's stylized the way they stylized fish in the Art Deco uh, era. This could be though as late as the 1950s. It could be because those roosters were popular with little toothpicks in them. 
And this fish has the little holes for the little tiny cocktail uh, toothpicks to be stuck in there. And it's a little, I guess a little, or, a little snack tray, a little hors d'oeuvre tray. Um, but uh, Hazel Atlas made glass fish and had glass fish uh, decorated on barware and things in the 1930s and 40s. And the way they stylized the fish in that era is very similar to this. But I'm going to have to do some looking to see if I can find out exactly when he was made. He's either from the 30s, the 40s, or into the 1950s. And uh, it is marked on the bottom, but I'm going to do some more digging around and try to find out it, just exactly when he was made. But that, boy, I'll tell you what, I'm definitely keeping that. Absolutely. Oh, would it be wrong to serve like little shrimps on here? You know, since he's a fish. I mean, would that be considered, you know, tacky? Poor taste. We'll serve cheese on it instead. All right, fish. Now, oh, but just a couple of books here. Tammy in Texas. Tammy in Texas. You have to come back to Philadelphia uh, next year because I'm not going to mail this to you. I'm going to hold on to it until you come back. This is all for you, Tammy in Texas. Sorry, Dave. Um, when I saw this, I said, got to get it. And obviously it's the collection, what does it say? The collectible 1970s. And this is all going to be right up Tammy's uh, Allie. Is that uh, Wonder Woman? It is. And Electra Woman and Dyna Girl. You remember Electra Woman and Dyna Girl? Of course you do. If I do, you do. Uh, and so this, it's a wonderful book because it's not, you don't just have, it's not just a price guide, uh, but it goes into all of the iconic uh, motifs of the era, the mushroom, the smiley face, the owl, mood rings, all of that stuff. F f uh, string art, what's that frog that Sears and Roebuck put out? Uh, oh, what is the name of that blasted frog? Not Freddy, Freddy the Frog was on um, uh, with that hippopotamus. What in the heck was that? Here I go again. Okay, Neil the, Neil the Frog. Okay, isn't that the frog that, that Sears and Roebuck put out on all the canisters and stuff? But Freddy was on, um, oh, that big hippopotamus would dance around with that little handkerchief in her hand. And some girl in go-go boots would come out and sing. What in the heck? What, not H.R. Puff and stuff. The New Zoo Review. That's it, the New Zoo Review. Now, I have not lost my mind. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look up the New Zoo Review and you'll see Freddy, I think it was Freddy the Frog, uh, who was actually more of a, I think, a 60s thing than a 70s thing. But anyway, Tammy, come on back to Philly. That'll be waiting for you. It's the New Zoo Review, coming right to you. It's the New Zoo this, I didn't really need it, but it was cheap. Delphite and Jadeite. A little pocket guide to Delphite and Jadeite. Oh, I'm sorry if that made a lot of noise. And then I saw this and my eyeballs went boing, 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 boing. The Simplex Player Action. Now you go, well, what the heck is that, Scott? Well, some of you know what that is. Um, I have always been one to fiddle with things like player pianos, pump organs, pipe organs, all of that stuff. And I did a full restoration in my, well, I would say I was in my early 30s of, um, of a player piano. Took the action apart, re-leathered it, did everything. Uh, all new valves, all new, uh, it just, I did everything. I even had my own tuner and tuned the, tuned the piano. So this, play, uh, Simplex, they made player pianos and this book goes, is a detailed book on the player action. 
the player pianos with the player rolls, you know, that no one has anymore. But so here is a mock-up of the player action here on the Simplex machine. And uh, so you have drawings and explanations. Um, how the valve, how the pneumatic action works. So I had to get that because I hope <laughs> at some point um, I'll have a workshop again and I'll be able to do that kind of restoration once again. Well, everyone, that's just about it. But before I sign out, if you saw my community page on the YouTube channel, you saw a photograph of a wonderful uh, lamp that I bought uh, a few days ago. And I am working on a video to tell you more about that lamp and how I'm going to do the restoration. I also have, and I already told you this a few videos ago, some great mid-century uh, kitchen appliance things to show you. So that's a video that I'm working on as well. There will be some new things in the old curiosity shop over the weekend. So I hope, well, wait a minute. Today is, the this is the weekend. I take that back. There might not be anything new in the old curiosity shop until early next week, but I'll let you know. Until then, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, have a wonderful weekend, and so long for now.